Maybe I just unnecessarily overexplain myself, but I think I clarify my age on here a lot. And I do this just in case someone is new to my channel and needs better understanding of how and why I think or feel a certain way like. I got into K-pop because of third gen groups whose maknaes were usually at least three to four years older than me. This is what's normal to me. Just like in the West, the most popular people in K-pop were in their mid to late twenties. You won't find a lot of famous musicians in the West under 17, and the groups I liked from third gen were not teenagers, so I didn't think anything of it. So when fourth gen came around I noticed an inverse of what I was used to. Now the maknaes were instead, three to four years younger than me instead of older. Now the most attention was being given to people who aren't even old enough to drive. Abnormal but I rolled with it. Maknaes to me are like the one caterpillar in a group of butterflies, underdeveloped, still growing, tots. For instance I think of P1 Harmony as a talented group with a Jong Sub and Soul Tot. I was a talented group with a Liceo Tot. New Jeans another Talton group with a High End and Hey Rin Tot. As years pass watching Maknaes of 4th Gen grow into their early 20s, I find it so cute when people have crushes on these Tots. I'll see posts and edits of fans going crazy over something a Tot did and it reminds me of my younger siblings. I have a little brother who would literally come to me with fat tears running down his fat cheeks out of his big brown eyes whispering to me about some crush he had on a girl, innocent and cute right? I register people having crushed on maknaes the same kind of way, it's cute. Seeing Jong Sub fans multiply and gush over him after P1's last comeback was adorable. But I don't feel the same innocent sweetness for fans who do the same to maknaes who have been highly sexualized like Nikki and Heyrin, it's icky. And maybe I'm dramatic. But not enough time has passed from when they were minors being exploited and sexualized to being legal adults. And it's perfectly understandable for anyone to want to shed their baby-like image and really come into their own. They want to be a butterfly, and I'm not trying to infantilize or hold anyone back nor am I trying to make their exploitation about me. But I'm still quite sore from all that. As someone who's not comfortable with children in any inherently unethical industry, there is some kind of damage done being put in a position to constantly protect these child idols from the perversion their companies are always setting them up for. Like why can't I just enjoy being a part of a fandom? Why do I also have to put up with both teenagers and adults alike sexualizing children? The amount of mockery and harassment I've had to endure for speaking up about this is downright fucking vile. I remember one time I was talking about how bunnies were actively ignoring new genes as exploitation long before Min Hee Jin was getting sued. And one of them questioned why I was acting like I was so much older and superior than New Jeans when me and Minji only have a three-year age gap. Last time I checked, you don't have to be a thousand years old to speak up about child exploitation. I have a mutual on TikTok. Their name is Emo underscore Yungi. She speaks so eloquently and passionately about child abuse, misogyny, rape culture and cultural appropriation in K-pop that I assumed she was a black woman in her late 20s. Nope. She's a white, born and raised European high schooler. Being young yourself does not excuse you from being negligent on the issues in K-pop. Nikki had, literally, only been 17 for a week at the time when I made a post stating how it's not okay to accuse him of encouraging his own sexualization. Because children cannot encourage people to prey on them, you either are or are not a predator. Yeah, it's okay to blame Nikki who literally turned 17 last week for people sexualizing him because he's actually a grown as fucking man. My mistakey wakey please don't spank me. And people had the audacity to make comments stating that it's okay to make sexually charged posts about him because they can't actually touch him in real life. This one man literally harassed and spammed me, trying to coax me into posting my face on TikTok because I reposted his face, attached to the gross comments he made about Nikki. This man's argument was that he's a victim and at a disadvantage because he posted his own face to TikTok allowing me to attach him to his own comments. I wish I still had the evidence because I'd show it, but this man was fucking disgusting. He had absolutely no shame in saying revolting shit about Nikki. He gave me the creeps so bad. It's like I could and still can, as I'm explaining this, feel him breathing on me, trying to persuade me into showing him my face even though I've never been near him. And if I could get so disturbed as a fan, I can only imagine how these young idols feel. I'm tired of this shit. Truly burnt out. But you need to be with people who accept you for who you are, and they're out there. You should never apologize for being you.